Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and uh, welcome everyone um, in this live session for this course Introduction to Modern Indian Political Thought. I am Mithilis Kumar Jha, the course instructor uh, for this semester and for this course. Um, let me begin with uh, ap uh, appreciating and congratulating all of you for uh, joining us uh, today in this live session and also for your regular participation. Um, um, in terms of submitting your assignment and giving your weekly feedback which is very valuable for us to um, um, improve or uh, to um, think about uh, our course and the ways and means to improve it. So, um, I appreciate all of you who are uh, participating regularly in terms of submitting uh, the assignments and also giving your feedbacks. I would also encourage you um, all, especially those of you who have not um, registered yet for the final exam to do so uh, before the 20th of uh, March. And as we proceed in this um, live session, I will request uh, you, those of you who are with us to um, write your um, questions queries and dots related to any of the topics which we have covered so far in this course. Uh, you can do so in this uh, comment section or the chat section while we uh, proceed in this uh, live session. Um, I encourage you to um, write your uh, queries and comments. Um, um, and I will wait um, uh, for your queries and comments to resp uh, respond and before uh, you uh, write and I should respond to those, I would also like to uh, make some uh, general points about this course. And I hope uh, for many of you uh, doing this course for the first time about um, uh, modern Indian political thought, um, you will be um, um, uh, knowing uh, a lot of uh, uh, thinkers from different ideological and political um, uh, affiliations and how they have helped in shaping the imagination of uh, modern India and how those contesting and uh, different positions on some of the uh, topics is continue to reverberate in our contemporary times. So, to understand uh, politics and uh, issues such as uh, religion, um, state, uh, democracy, the constitutional morality, uh, the relationship between caste and politics. Some of these thinkers and their uh, position will help you to understand some of these contesting themes. So, um, let me respond to Abhishek Tiwari uh, who has asked about uh, uh, what should we study for uh, exam apart from the video lecture. So, I believe um, if you uh, follow the lecture, uh, video lecture and besides that for many video lecture we have also written transcription. For many video lectures we are in the process of um, uh, completing the transcription and as soon as it is completed we will upload for uh, those lectures as well. But for uh, uh, those lectures for which now uh, we have the video transcript. I encourage you to follow the video transcript and besides that the PPT for that particular lecture. So, I believe for this course for the examination purpose if you do this um, uh, regular video lecture followed by reading the transcription and the PPTs that should be sufficient. But besides that if you wish to study more and in depth for in each video lecture I have provided in the PPT the last slide the further readings or the references and I will encourage you to do so if you want to study more and in slightly more uh, broader way to understand a particular thinkers 
and the views of particular thinkers on that particular themes. So, you can uh, uh, follow those reading materials which uh, is provided in the last slide of the each PPT lecture. Uh, for exam purpose in this course, let me repeat your um, uh, video lecture transcription and PPT should be sufficient. Arun Sarma asked about sir I submit online examination form, but I have no confirmation message about it. Arun I will um, um, request my uh, technical team to respond to this uh, queries and besides I will also uh, uh, request you to uh, mention it on the uh, discussion forum also we will immediately respond. You also ask about please tell us about the final exam and when the results are declared. Um, uh, final exam is on 25th of April. The nature of questions would be MCQ, the objective type questions, and hopefully uh, within two weeks and so your results should be declared after uh, your exam. Uh, uh, Arun Sarma is also asking what uh, please provide the uh, PDF uh, lecture and all study materials. It will definitely help us for UGC net exam. Thanks Arun for your uh, uh, question. Um, for uh, uh, many of the video lecture, we have not yet uh, completed the transcription. As soon as those will be done, we will upload. But for those lectures for which we have uh, transcription, we are uploading it as soon as it is uh, ready. So, we will try to um, upload those transcription also in the coming time and uh, hope uh, you will um, uh, continue to participate and uh, uh, give your feedbacks on various video lectures and uh, PPTs that are available. <coughs> so, uh, thanks all so far for your uh, questions. Now, um, uh, let me uh, also um, address some of the uh, questions which was there on the um, uh, discussion forum and which is um, in a nature. Uh, which I suppose will be helpful for uh, many of you as well. So, in this uh, live session, I am restricting to the seven, um, uh, seven thinkers uh, and these are uh, Man, uh, Ram Manohar Roy, uh, Ram uh, Mohan Roy, uh, Rabindranath Tagore, Aurobind Ghosh, Vivekananda, M. K. Gandhi, Muhammad Iqbal and Vinayak Damodar Savarkar. So, in this uh, live session, we will restrict to these thinkers and their ideas and I will request you to uh, uh, write your uh, queries and comments in this um, uh, uh, comment section or chat section and I will be happy to respond. I am also hoping to have one more live session in the next week, where we will cover the remaining uh, thinkers such as uh, Nehru, Ambedkar, Ramabai and Ram Manohar Lohia. So, uh, you can also put uh, questions for these thinkers in the discussion forum as well as when the announcement are made for that live session, you can um, um, like you have done for today's live session, you can write your comments and question on the Google spreadsheet as well. Okay, so, um, um, the question of uh, Naresh Raja about the reading materials for the course, which I think I have uh, just uh, uh, addressed as uh, when uh, I was responding to Abhishek Tiwari's question that video uh, uh, lecture or transcript and the PPT should be sufficient. Besides that, you can refer to the last slide of each PPT to read more about that particular thinker and the theme. The exam pattern would be uh, MCQ and the objective types um, in nature. And um, um, uh, it would be uh, uh, divided into three um, sections basically, where uh, in one section it would be from your assignments, uh, from the second section it would be a kind of recall on the basis of uh, listening to uh, the videos and so on. And finally, it would be analytical to understand uh, or to um, assess your analytical understanding of the topics or the themes or the thinkers that we have covered in this course. 
So, uh, the final exam would be uh, 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 consisted of all these three uh, sections. And uh, some of you have also asked about the text transcriptions of remaining video lecture and as I have said that we are in the process of uh, preparing it as soon as we complete we will upload it. Uh, one a question by Praveen Pralayankar is about Arvindu's views on um, uh, Varna system and untouchability that was asked on the discussion forum and I would like to address them now. And while I am doing so, I will also request those of you who are with us to write your um, uh, queries, comments uh, and I will be happy to respond, them, uh, respond to them as well. Uh, to respond to Praveen questions on Arbindo's views on Varna system and um, untouchables, uh, um, Arbindo's uh, approach to the caste was a bit different from modern uh, political uh, rhetorics or discourse on caste and politics. Uh, uh, he was uh, responding to uh, many kind of social divisions and caste he uh, 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 approached as a kind of division of labor where um, uh, 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 the uh, guiding force for such division is uh, the spirituality and he defines a spirituality in him very um, um, uh, distinct sense then it is reduction to the religion or dogmatic religion in any forms. So, um, according to Aurobindo the caste system in Hinduism is the reflection of the spiritual and the moral foundation of Hinduism which believes in the duties of the man. So, the uh, status of individual in the society is not because he or she has born into that particular caste, but because his ap ability to develop himself spiritually and morally to perform certain functions. However, he also agreed that in um, um, uh, modern times such a division of um, um, labor in the society has perverted and it has become about a kind of arrogance or superiority or exclusion of many um, uh, groups or communities and uh, that he wanted to reform or he, that he wanted to set right. But the whole purpose of uh, caste in Hinduism according to um, Arbindu in my understanding was uh, to um, uh, remind the individual about his duties and um, uh, his ability to perform those duties ascertain his social position and so on. Uh, uh, there is one more question uh, by Praveen which is about does he support Triguna system as described in Bhagavad Gita and some of you if you are familiar we have discussed um, uh, Aurobindo's views on Gita where he talks about three guna that is tamasic, rajasic and sattvic and all creatures on earth are governed by the mixture of or the dominance of one of these three uh, uh, gunas tamasic, rajasic and sattvic. Uh, Arvindu however was arguing for a state of uh, life that would be beyond this triguna which he calls triguna teeth that means getting rid of the dualism of any of these three guna or the absolute indifference to, um, um, to any of the um, um, uh, partiality that uh, or dualism that exist um, uh, in the minds of the individual while performing certain action. So, uh, Arvindu was conceptualizing a self which would be beyond this duality or the ambiguities of uh, Trigunas and he was um, uh, thinking of a society which would be uh, uh, the harmony of a spiritual and material aspect of life that provide the individual condition to attain this state of uh, liberation. So, that is his uh, views on um, uh, Triguna system as it uh, as described in uh, Bhagavad Gita and more on this you 
can um, um, read by referring to his um, um, record of yoga by Arvindu, which is now published and it is uh, a voluminous book compilation of his uh, speeches and uh, um, 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 uh, short uh, sermons and that will uh, give you the glimpses into the thinking of Arvindu towards self, uh, society and the role of uh, 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 um, um, these um, uh, Vedas and uh, scriptures in uh, developing those consciousness in the uh, individual. Uh, Abhishek Tiwari asks us about, uh, sir can you elaborate Iqbal's views on Hindu Muslim unity during different phases of independence struggle? Um, Abhishek, uh, this is uh, too broad a question to uh, respond, um, respond to um, you here. But um, uh, Iqbal as a uh, philosopher was deeply rooted in the um, Islamic uh, tradition and of course he wanted to give uh, Islam or Sharia a more uh, modern uh, rational uh, interpretation which he called reconstruction of religious thought in Islam. So his views on nation and um, 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 uh, community was deeply embedded in his um, uh, uh, religious thought which is uh, Islam and Islam is the basis of his understanding. However, in different phases of life, um, uh, Iqbal um, has also progressed uh, in a sense. In the beginning, he was arguing for Hindu um, Muslim unity. If you look at some of uh, his early uh, composition about Sare Jahan Se Achha and so on. But gradually he was also um, uh, 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 conceptualizing the idea of nation on the basis of Islam and therefore he, he was presented as the philosopher of um, uh, Pakistan or the um, uh, poet who supported the idea of uh, Pakistan. But in uh, later years we have also seen that how um, Iqbal uh, was looking at Islam as a kind of uh, pan-Islamic uh, idea, uh, cutting across the boundaries of nation and states and he looked at uh, um, uh, Millat or the uh, community in that, uh, that sense. So um, there is a kind of uh, uh, constant evolution of uh, social, religious and political thought of Iqbal where in the early phase he was championing a kind of um, Hindustan which would be uh, a kind of Gulista, uh, the uh, um, unity between Hindu and Muslim to a uh, philosopher who was uh, supporting the idea of Pakistan on the basis of Islam and gradually he was uh, rejecting all uh, nation as we have seen in other thinkers such as uh, Rabindranath uh, uh, Tagore. Uh, in his uh, views nationalism or nation, he was not critical of any particular uh, 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 nation but the whole idea of nation and nationalism. Similarly, in um, Iqbal we have uh, seen his repudiation of any um, national territorial um, uh, division in Islam. So um, uh, uh, irony is that he is seen as a philosopher of uh, Pakistan but he also has the uh, pan-Islamic uh, views. So I hope uh, 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 I respond to um, your question um, and if you uh, want some more elaboration, you can put it on the uh, discussion forum. Okay, so on discussion uh, uh, forum, there was one question about the spiritual reason or a spiritual development of individual in the political thought of Aurobindo. And uh, we have to understand that uh, when Arvindu was arguing about um, uh, the development of self um, and uh, for the development of self, for Arvindu, the spirituality is um, absolutely necessary and uh, his understanding of spirituality is very different from the uh, dogmatic religious forms. So, um, uh, his idea of uh, spirituality is 
or a spiritual religion is something which enables the man uh, or um, empower the man to realize the divine within and once that a uh, divine is realized he or she can uh, have uh, no acrimonious or conflict in com um, communion with the other so he was visualizing a kind of uh, community which will not be guided by dogmatic religion of any forms uh, and of course um, his notion of religion or a spiritual uh, religion was necessary for individual to develop that kind of world uh, communion uh, communion or uh, the kind of community where all kind of boundaries uh, can be uh, transcended and uh, to transcend those boundaries um, uh, Aurobindo subordinated the material urge in man to the spiritual urge and that spiritual urge is realization of divine in the self and when once you realize that um, um, uh, divine um, existence in self you have no conflict with others in terms of your uh, relations or in terms of your uh, fellow feelings or developing a sense of uh, community uh, I'd also like to, um, uh, Abhishek has asked many questions, I have responded to some of your queries uh, now as well. There is a question about um, where to watch the live session, um, uh, one of you have asked on the Google spreadsheet which uh, was um, uh, provided on uh, uh, the course dashboard. Uh, while making this announcement of the live session. So, in that announcement itself there was a link about uh, this um, um, address where you can um, uh, join the live session. So, please refer to the announcement when it is made about the live session uh, where you can, um, you can um, uh, join and ask your queries. Let me once again um, um, encourage some of you who have uh, just joined um, in this live session to make your uh, questions, uh, comments and queries in the um, uh, comment section or the chat section in this live session and I will be very happy to uh, respond. There is one question by um, Gauri Lakshmi um, uh, which is not very specific. Uh, it is uh, about the question is about Savarkar. And I am not very sure that which uh, ideas of Savarkar or which aspect of his thought uh, this question refers to. But uh, I would like to uh, uh, respond and if you are um, uh, with us during this uh, live session, I will ask you to um, make it more specific uh, for me to uh, respond. But um, Savarkar is a kind of uh, a uh, very um, complex political thinker and especially uh, in the contemporary uh, political discourse uh, there is um, a group which celebrate um, his thought and his ideals and there are other groups which um, uh, despise or um, reject or criticize his uh, uh, thought. But um, Savarkar and his thought can be as I have argued in the lectures in this course uh, needs to be understand need, needs to be understood or um, put in the context of the historical um, uh, development in Indian subcontinent where there was different imagination of nation. There was the secular imagination, there is also um, 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 uh, uh, religious imagination, the partition of the subcontinent was done on the basis of um, religious discrimination. So, the, there was the various uh, socio-historical forces which were, which were at work uh, while uh, we were fighting uh, uh, for uh, political independence. So, Savarkar in that context represent a, um, 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 a thought process 
which uh, tried to um, um, conceptualize nation not just in territorial sense but also in religious and cultural sense and uh, the combination of uh, these uh, two are a very powerful um, uh, project of nationalism across uh, the world. So, on uh, Savarkar, um, uh, we uh, need to go beyond this contemporary binaries of either celebrating or despising to have a kind of dispassionate engagement with his uh, thought and ideals, which remains very significant for the contemporary times as well. And the most powerful uh, concept that um, Savarkar argue is about the idea of Hindutva. And Arun Sharma has just put this question, uh, please tell us about the Savarkar views on Hindutva. And um, 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 I um, uh, uh, encourage those of you who have not watched that particular video on Savarkar to once again in watch uh, uh, that video and follow the uh, PPTs to understand in details about the Hindutva. But um, uh, for this uh, session, I would like to state that Sarkar makes a, a distinction between Hinduism as a religion and Hindutva as something which is a political um, ideal or a political construct. And it has very little to do with Hinduism. And often we use in our contemporary discourse uh, Hinduism and Hindutva as one and the same thing. Uh, in um, Savakar uh, understanding, Hindutva is much more broader than Hinduism. Hinduism is only one form of religion. He considered other religion which is native to this land such as um, uh, Sikhism or Buddhism or Jainism as part of his political project uh, of um, Hindutva. So, Hindutva in that sense is much more broader than, uh, than uh, Hinduism and he himself argued that uh, um, 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 uh, those um, um, uh, terms which is often used for uh, Hindutva such as Hinduism uh, is not apt and he considered Hinduness uh, about a whole set of peoples who had a definite history or a definite culture that has shaped his um, um, uh, thinking, his um, uh, beliefs that should be the basis of um, um, his um, um, uh, identity or his um, uh, world views. And Hindutva is seen in that sense. Hinduism is a particular form of religion which is within the Hindutva. So, Hindutva is much more broader a political construct than the Hinduism and he connects it with the idea of Hindustan or uh, uh, nationhood. So, his idea of nation and nationalism can be regarded as the part of his uh, uh, Hindutva notion and in many uh, uh, um, uh, contemporary writings and political discourse as well, we see that uh, uh, the definition of nationalism is uh, um, uh, for many scholars based on this uh, uh, premise of um, Savarkar about uh, the uh, notion of Hindutva. So, um, Savarkar uh, differentiate between Hinduism and Hindutva and consider Hindutva as a broader uh, uh, term than Hinduism and connect it with his idea of uh, nationalism. So, um, the uh, nationalism in Savarkar's understanding is deeply embedded in his philosophy of Hindutva. Uh, and for um, Hindutva, he regarded those community or those religion which is uh, uh, um, part of which originated in this land. In other words, those who consider this land as their fatherland, um, uh, Pitrabhumi and also Karmabhumi or um, a, uh, a land where the uh, work or labor. So, um, this land belongs to all of them and those who believe this uh, land as their Pitrabhumi or Punyabhumi, holy land and the fatherland, they um, are regarded as the um, uh, part of his uh, construct of um, uh, Hindutva and that is the basis of his imagination of uh, a nation and nationhood. 
So that is his connection between Hindutva and nationhood and his differentiation between Hindutva and Hinduism. Abhishek Tiwari asked about uh, Tagore was not supportive of non-cooperation movement, but what was his take on Gandhi's uh, charkha? So, uh, Abhishek, um, uh, Tagore um, uh, and Gandhi has uh, many uh, differences and uh, uh, while Gandhian position on charkha was that it enables the um, uh, individual and community a kind of self uh, reliance. So, uh, it has both uh, for Gandhi a material and as well as the symbolic value for the people as a whole. So, um, Gandhian approach to charkha uh, was um, guided by this um, uh, uh, objective of rekindling the idea of self-reliance or Swaraj in the self. Every single individual should participate in uh, this movement of charkha. And it has also the symbolic value. So, once we achieve the self-reliance and um, um, if you recall uh, that uh, historical political context, we are uh, defying the foreign uh, goods. Um, or um, uh, rejecting the foreign uh, uh, clothes. So, uh, Charkha has that uh, in that particular uh, socio-political and historical context both a material as well as the symbolic function. However, uh, Tagore's understanding of economy was much more different which he was experimenting in Sri Niketan and Sant Niketan where it was about uh, more uh, modern. Uh, scientific uh, rational line and therefore, uh, he uh, differs from um, and perhaps uh, could not appreciate much the Gandhian belief and values in this whole uh, movement of uh, uh, Charka. So, um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, Tagore appears to be more um, uh, at par with the modern um, uh, approach uh, when it comes to economy, when it comes to education, when it comes to empowering the nation than uh, Gandhi. And Gandhian take was much more uh, subversive in a sense which was not very explicit to uh, many others even his own uh, followers. So, that was in my opinion a kind of uh, difference between um, Tagore and Gandhi uh, about uh, Charkha. So, for many people it may not appear that Charkha why people should waste their labor on something when in modern times you have the technology to help you. But for Gandhian perspective was that it is not about uh, uh, discarding the uh, technology, but dis uh, rejecting the domination of technology or realizing the value of uh, the labor or the Swaraj and uh, that is uh, not very explicit or not very clear to many those who are the votaries of modern science, economy, technology and so on. So, uh, that is my uh, response to this question. I hope I uh, 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 sure I am sure that um, it respond to uh, your questions. If you have more dots, you can also uh, uh, write. Uh, on the discussion forum. Arun Sorma asked about Aurobindo criticized the militant method of protest of 1857 mutiny. Arun, um, I am not very sure about uh, this because Aurobindo himself was a militant or believed in the heroic action or supported uh, militant action for the national uh, liberation and of course, his idea of uh, nation or Bharat Mata was very uh, spiritual and very different than many uh, modern uh, merely political and the social approach to the uh, uh, nation. So, I will check this uh, uh, question whether he was critical of the militant method of protest. Uh, it was not a protest, it was a revolt by the um, army or it was the first independence. So, the method was certainly a um, 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 violent method. What was Aurobindo's take on that? I have to check and I will let you know on the discussion forum. 
Okay, so um, I believe um, you can continue to write your question and comments. Uh, and um, uh, once again, I will um, uh, request you all to um, uh, uh, do the uh, uh, registration for uh, the exam and uh, participate uh, on the discussion forum and also uh, submit your assignments and give your weekly uh, uh, feedback which help us to improve the course content in the following years um, uh, and also in the following lectures. So, I um, will encourage you to um, um, uh, write your questions, comments and dots on the discussion forum and when we will have a live session once again uh, in the uh, next month, um, uh, you, you should particularly um, uh, uh, write your questions on um, Nehru, Ambedkar, Ramabai and um, Lohia and we will take it up when we will have uh, the next live session uh, in the next month. Uh, so, Arun you have uh, asked about this uh, Nehru's views on socialism, which I believe we will take up in the uh, uh, next uh, uh, live session, but uh, immediately he was a um, um, uh, supporter of socialism and uh, uh, to restructure the society along the socialist uh, line. Uh, he. Uh, um, he was uh, envisioning or uh, envisaging a society which would be based on the principle of egalitarian redistribution of wealth. So, land reforms and many other uh, scientific uh, temperament or modern science and technology, uh, the rise of industries was part of that project where um, uh, we wanted development, but we want development with equity or a, a kind of uh, egalitarian society, but we will discuss in much detail when we will take up uh, Nehru along with um, Ambedkar, Ramabai and uh, Lohia in the next live session. Do ask your question on the uh, discussion forum. So, uh, I believe uh, that is all um, in this um, live session. Uh, you um, uh, uh, thanks to uh, those of you. Okay, uh, Arun is asking, "What, sir? How can I score seventy-five percent plus marks in final exam? Exam patterns like assignment question." So, um, Arun, and also for many of you, uh, the um, um, uh, distribution of marks is such that you cannot score more than 75 percent in the um, uh, final exam. So, um, uh, so out of the final percent you can score certainly 75 percent, but out of 100 say 25 percent is kept for uh, the assignment, the weekly assignment and in the weekly assignment um, based 8 out of 12 will be uh, considered for your final assessment. So, suppose out of 12 assignments, um, the best 8 uh, assignments of yours will be regarded as the part of assessment. So, out of that um, um, best 8, you will get about 25 percent of the marks and 75 percent marks is for the uh, final exam. And as I have said, the final uh, exam will be MCQ type questions where there would be 3 kinds of question. And, um, uh, out of that you can certainly uh, achieve more than 75 percent. Um, if you uh, follow all the lectures, uh, the uh, transcripts and also the PPT which I have provided. And if you have, so the nature of the question would be from the lectures, from the PPTs that uh, and, uh, uh, that is provided, uh, that has been provided to, uh, uh, to you. So, if you follow those lectures, transcripts and the PPTs. I believe it will not be difficult for you to score more than 75 percent. So, the question will comes from 
and this uh, PPT and lecture itself. And um, uh, I hope if you have any doubts uh, or request you uh, to uh, write your uh, comments, queries on the discussion forum. And also, when we will have live session in the next month, I will be happy to respond to many of your uh, questions and com um, uh, comments or queries if you have any. So, um, I think that uh, that is all for uh, today's live session. Once again, I will um, uh, I thank you all for your questions and comments and those of you who have um, um, uh, been with us during this live session, uh, thanks, uh, thank you very much and I once again encourage you to use discussion forum and for the next live session do share your questions and comments and I will be ha very happy to respond. And let me remind to those of you who have not registered for the exam to do so now. Thank you very much.